reposition the surface transport sector as affordable riverine tourism prior to wbtc his swalka campaign at ghatal midnapur in 2015 aimed to enroll 18 year old girls as voters the campaign campaign was adopted by state ceo office his cake campaign at darjeeling 2016 was state's top 3 for the best electoral practice awards by eci he has been also director civil service study circle of government of west bengal since 2018 and loves mentoring youth kapoor loves painting he is coming up with his solo exhibition soon on the literary front he was editor of ias association magazine reminiscence 2014 2012 to 2014 he has been honorary advisor and editor with vow international art literary festival 2017 to 2020 his better half is his colleague in the irs income tax priyanka and both spend most time reading and discussing exotic food oh, we will have to have a talk on that also soon exotic food i think interests all of us so over to mr kapoor and uh, adidev can we have the street uh, the screen sharing facility so that i think uh, as and when he requires it he will take it up welcome over to you so first of all a warm good evening to all of you i'm sorry i got a little late there was a meeting that i was in and um, i think gm has put a lot of burden on my shoulders by giving such a long introduction which i think my i had sent from my office only because he wanted one for the poster <laughs> so it's very embarrassing to listen to your own introduction which you only sent anyway thank you um well to be very frank when i got this order of being the managing director of west bengal transport corporation i did not even know that trams are under this charge and uh, when i joined i googled up and i came to know so it, it took me a while to understand that trams are you know working under this transport corporation and uh, i saw that uh, there has been a generic uh, thought that you know trams are causing traffic problems and trams slow down the city space they are not that efficient and all and i like any youngster i would call myself a youngster i'm not even 35 at the moment so when i when i became the managing director so i first took it what i heard from my junior colleagues i used to call them to my chamber and you know discuss about the various things and what came to me as a surprise was that i found two sorts of people in calcutta one a group that is uber uh, passionate about the trams and they would want to you know do anything for the trams and there's another group that would really not give much of anything you know any weightage or any damn about the trams and for them it's more of a nuisance so I joined in Jan, and first two three months, I was not able to understand uh, as to what really the situation, you know, is because when you join any posting, you have to understand the dynamics and all. At the back of mind, uh, being an artistic, uh, both husband and wife, we are very much into arts and all. So we were artistic, and we loved the idea of trams because when I was in Calcutta and not as the MD of the tramways, I used to. actually i have taken out my guests to the trams when they came from abroad i have actually bought tickets 5 rupee tickets and took them in old calcutta i love the pace and i used to think that you know why are they not uh, being marketed the way they should be that was a thought that i had as a person who uh, likes anything which is art artsy anything which is heritage so coming back to how this thought began gm i'm giving you a background because i am no expert in trams i'm no expert in heritage i am simply a bureaucrat who has to do his work and uh, so it was in the lockdown that you know i started researching and i started googling and i started getting access to books and i wanted to know what was the history and i got so interested in it that i spent almost a month and i remember after i was filled with knowledge i we had a session with nan tara and you know we talked about the history and i was able to give some facts which no one knew 
just just speaks that you know i became very much interested in the entire concept of the trams during my research which i did from various sources i realized that this whole idea that tram is a nuisance is actually not correct completely there is uh, truth to it but not fully true however i also saw that you know when any city so this fact all of you should uh, give a little cognizance to because i read it while i was reading a lot of books on transport there's a set theory which says that whenever a city evolves the transport evolves trams are in the primitive stage so you know whenever a city develops in a uh, beginning phase it's only a few kilometers in radius that is a time when people can walk around do all the chores that they're doing and they can have tram cars and they can have horses and they can have you know communication uh, and transportation modes like that when it grows bigger people start using motor cars when it grows further bigger buses came into picture and now when cities have become really big megalopolis you have the subways you have the trains which connect different cities like if you go to north america and europe you see there are really fast trains which connect cities and it's a part of urban travel so one thing we have to understand that if there has been a decline of trams over the last 100 years it is not something unusual what i found in my research was that in a lot of countries all over the world there was a decline in the number of routes of trams because they ultimately gave way to fuel based cars and they gave way to you know subways and metros so it is not something unique to calcutta so i sometimes find people saying that you know why have we reduced it over the last 30 years so i just thought of putting this in clarity that it's a transportation mechanism anywhere in the world if it has to go down in a longer perspective then what is the solution what can we do so here i saw that many countries have phased out the trams but a lot of them have tried to preserve it a lot of them had phased them out but then again came back with the trams and some of them have positioned them as a heritage value which gives them a lot of revenue from tourists and even people value them just like any of their past heritage when i look at the city of joy you know now that i'm seeing it from the inside let me tell you the thought process that i'm having at the moment which is probably based on practical facts and you know the way we could go ahead a there is a category of trams which are in running condition and are running on the trams the routes right b trams are in running condition but because of some xyz reasons the route has been closed the route has been closed for any reason it could be traffic it could be police it could be any reason a certain route is not operational and c the trams which we have actually lost in time because it's been 40 years old 70 years old so those trams have lost the viability to run on the road so you know so when i started planning about when i say i i mean the organization so when this thought came into the picture as to what we could do so one obvious thing was that in the a category that the trams which are running on the routes why don't we bring in an element of excitement why don't we bring in an element of you know a tourist value there are trams which are running all over the city they will transport people who are office goers and students but there is a certain part of calcutta which has never been on the trams you know you may call it uh, a north south divide or a regional divide or a class divide i don't know how you call it but there is a huge part of the city that just looks at the trams from outside has never ventured into the trams and at the same time we need to improve the kind of look and feel of a normal tram so that's how the experiment began and in september we came up with a calcutta tram library and uh, that is when i realized that how much the city loves its trams so whatever i was being told by a few people or you know my colleagues was certainly not true so the moment we launched this tram library gm we saw that there was an instant uh, love for the whole idea and the idea was that if you are traveling in boi pada which is called its street so we had been uh, battered by cyclone amphan in the last few months and we were recovering our roots so suddenly this idea stuck that you know this tram is going to start in college street and college street is known for books why don't we have a library on a tram where people could actually you know read while they're going in the college street so it is a symbiotic and it's a very symbolic symbolic sort of gesture 
a lot of critics may say it is you're not changing anything the system is blah 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 but then we start small and we start slow you cannot bring a radical change in a day you know if something has been followed for decades you need to start with one an experiment and then it grows and i'm very happy that i'm seeing that it's been two months gm that we launched exactly two months on 24th of september if you google we launched the kolkata tram library and today two months later i am seeing so much of public support for the trams and the support is now coming in in you know in ways of people wanting to help organizations wanting to help in terms of ideas in terms of supporting in fact now i have to figure out what sops do we make so that we can accommodate people on board whereas two months back all i used to hear about the trams even within the organization was that you know there's no future fine it's happening but you know so that i think is a reinvention the whole idea that trams are a viable transportation medium they are a tourist attraction they are a part of your heritage and it's a collective responsibility for all of us to preserve and protect them i think these two months have been phenomenal for me personally although i became corona positive in the process because i was visiting the depots and visiting the trams i don't know what what caused it and i gave the infection to my wife also we were both down for a month but i was working from the hospital also just on phone and ideation and thinking and let me tell you there have a lot of things have happened you may not have seen a lot of things on the paper or on the road right now but a lot of things are happening in the planning stage and in the coming few months you'll see a lot of things will roll out so once we you know launched this calcutta tram library gm we saw that you know if reoriented in form of a unique offering calcutta will love it so that's how we got inspired and we, yeah and that's how we got inspired and you know a few days later uh, we went into cruise tourism but that is not linked with the trams then we came up with this idea of having a jute tram now a jute tram was simply linking two iconic things of bengal you know jute has been a very inseparable part of us so we thought why not sell some jute items on the tram decorate it with jute items link up with the correctional homes and start a tram so these are small experiments with, which will ultimately lead to bigger changes you know these are not bigger changes but these experiments were required because i needed to test how much is the love for trams and whether people are taking to it or not i may start something big and it fails so better to go slow and we saw that the response had been very good in this also and recently on the children's day we launched the kolkata young readers tram car where the oxford bookstore helped us curate a big library and they are an old iconic bookshop so you know it only goes to add to the brand value of both and people have loved it so now i think we know that if we do some changes with the tram system we would get the support of the city and the people and now gm what i am basically thinking on is how to improve the basic conditions of the trams which are running the thought that is in the mind right now the planning that we are doing right now we have already seen for three examples that they've got global attention you know we've been covered by the top newspapers and magazines of the world which goes to show that calcutta trams are an inseparable part of the city's heritage now what i'm thinking is for a common man who rides a tram from sham bazaar to dharamtala or from raja bazaar to somewhere what tangible facilities can i provide him can the corporation provide him or her so the trams become a better experience and without divulging a lot of things right now we are you know doing brainstorming sessions with our team and i am also talking to people i meet in dinners and if there's any sort of socializing happening right now i do ask them what do you think you know at the end of the day could help so we are figuring out what we can do and some things which are on the card are a free wifi for all the travelers so i'm working out the de- details i'll see how it works irrespective of the uh, route all travelers on a tram are going to get a free wifi now the advantage of this symbiotic relationship would be gm that will attract the younger generation onader jeno ekhon ki hoye gache they find tram a very uh, unattractive you know they all want to go in swanky cars and go to malls and take selfies but sitting in a tram for them very few of us you know would appreciate the finesse and the nostalgia a lot of kids are not having any connection because they've been brought up in the last 20 years and they've only seen trams you know 
uh, with uh, a certain way. So now, uh, individual trams, fine. There are a lot of things happening. I can't divulge the details here because it will lose on the excitement. All I can say is that there's an international body with whom we are collaborating. And within a month, you'll see a certain tram dedicated to Calcutta's heritage. There's one special tram we are coming up with GM, which will be a museum. And we are, we are uh, partnering with, again, a first of sorts museum in the world based out of India, not from Bengal. And if we come up with that tram, that will really change the way we have looked at tourism on a tram. So there are a lot of things happening with single, single trams. But a larger thing that I'm thinking, that I'm planning, and I'm talking to people that I meet is, what facilities do I give to people who are taking a normal ride? Fine. Heritage is fine. Tourism is fine. But I need to give some sort of benefit. Sort of <laughs> and this is what is the current uh, thought. And I would love to have feedback from people here, maybe later as well through email or if GM can tell as to what people would like to see on a tram. I'm not talking about the decorated trams. I'm not talking about the high priced trams. I'm talking about a normal five rupee tram, which a person will take for office or a kid will take from college to home. So, so that, you know, we can attract the youth. So options are there. A lot of, so we're thinking, so Wi-Fi is one viable option, which I'm thinking could really help us attract youngsters because, you know, for a 20 minutes free Wi-Fi, a lot of youngsters would want to sit on a tram, which otherwise they would really want to ignore. And there are other such options. So we have to see the feasibility, the economic viability. So this is one project we are doing. On the technological aspect also, I fingers crossed in December, we're coming up with a... Um, I'm seeing some people giving ideas. Thank you so much. I'll note down all of them and then we can surely uh, think about these ideas. So this is one uh, thing, GM. Uh, I can see some people that, you know, um, improving the overall quality of trams, not just a few good trams and a lot of trams which are not very good. So the idea is to improve the base level of all the trams, yet retain the original structure. I mean, interior ke touch for China. I don't want to touch the interiors because that is the identity. Uh, you know, the stained walls, the way it is written, I think that gives you a goosebump. You know, I can always get it painted white and black and red and whatever but we lose the identity so i want the interiors to be the same gm although some people may not like them i would want the interior markings to be the same for a longer time because i think that adds to the heritage value i can certainly get them nicely done from the outside get a free wi-fi and see more facilities i can give maybe water maybe newspaper we'll have to figure out so we are all working with a team and let me assure you i'm not trying to publicize myself I'm even dreaming of trams nowadays. I've got so much into it. So two months before, it was just like a normal... You see, I'm looking after buses and trams and waterways. So tram was a part of my work. Now, in addition to all the work, because of the um, beautiful artistic things that we've been able to do with the trams, I'm honestly telling you, and my wife uh, hates the word. So she says, you know, both of us are working, GM. So when we reach home, she tells me, now you are not going to say this word because that's you are taking it more than my name. So she literally warned me a few days back that, you know, if you have to live here in the house, you're not supposed to say this four letter word. And every morning when I wake up, I tell her, listen, I got this idea. So we are working like children. We're working like young, innocent children trying to make a change and God willing and with support of all the establishment and people, we might bring some good changes in the coming few months. So this Im overall improvement is on the cards. Another thing which you all can expect in the coming one month is a nice technology solution for you, which will help you, you know, in a big way by knowing when your next tram is coming. Um, you know, in, in a way, I cannot divulge more at the moment. We are in the ideation phase, but that will really help you, um, you know, improve the ridership quality. And uh, now coming to the third part of the trams, first was the running trams. Second was the trams, which we are uh, uh, improving for everybody. Now there are certain trams which are outlived their, you know, they've outlived their uh, utility. So these trams, GM, what is happening is you cannot run them. 
the 70 years old 50 years old if i start repairing them the cost will be so much i can buy three new trams in that so the point is now the options are twofold the traditional school of thought will say condemn kar dijiye isko aap discard kar dijiye the traditional school of thought would say okay you simply condemn the tram you dispose the tram but we are now trying to work how can we retain that heritage in situ where it is and create some beautiful parts in the city and that's what we're working on so i don't want to diverge everything immediately but all i can say is that we're trying our best to do something so that all types of trams you know are taken care of the heritage tourist sort of trams the normal trams which are running all over the city and the trams which are not mobile but they are lying i you know i let me tell you i visited a depot and uh, i was aghast to see how certain old trams have been kept nothing wrong but uh, when i talk to the crew they tell me sir ye kharab ho gaya hai ye nahi chalega ye ab aisa hi pada hai ye bahut saal se pada hai aapka jitna umar hai usse purana tram hai that's what they tell me now the idea is can we let it go into the drain can we let it go uh into oblivion no we cannot because ultimately it has its own heritage value so the third uh, aspect to our reinvention of the trams in calcutta is how can we change these stationary trams how can we convert them into a viable option which mixes economy which mixes uh, tourism and at the same uh, you know in the same page we are able to preserve those trams so certain interventions will be planned that so whenever you see anything new coming up in the newspaper in future you will see it will be in either of the three slots and we're trying to work parallelly on all because the single intention that i'm working with as the md of the tramway still the time i'm here is how many trams have i been able to change slash protect slash upgrade that's it so when i joined if you know it was uh, x number of trams or y number of trams what percentage of trams have we been able to touch and improve so that whoever joins as the next managing director later and the next and next can actually take it higher so this is broadly the conceptual part of it gm i'm sorry i've been a little too administrative in my talk but you know i wanted to tell you that this is the entire paradigm in which uh, we are thinking and uh, i know a lot of you will feel it's not enough some of you may feel that you know it's more can be done but uh, we've started working and i am sure that uh, if the pace goes on like this um a lot of things will improve yeah so would you be open to taking questions Jim, I would be open to taking questions. If there's anything you want to say, if there's anything, uh, any idea people want to give, yeah. it would be a pleasure to yeah, know. That's what uh, one is. Of course, uh, uh, thank you very much for being here. And uh, of course, as you mentioned, that's all thanks to Nandara that this happened ultimately. So, but uh, it's very interesting to see all the various uh, inputs which you are trying to provide to be able to. you know make trams more popular thank you that's the whole idea thank you that's the whole idea and in fact there are some routes i mean i have been a user of uh, no i was a you have stopped using it unfortunately but the user of the most scenic route which is from esplanade to khidirpur yes it is in, in, indeed is I yes it indeed is so i have used that route since i was a school kid <laughs> so you can imagine how it has evolved over the years uh, but uh, we have with us uh, in fact um, uh, mr sanjay bukaji who was financial controller of the railway board and he is a railway enthusiast and he has in fact we have discussed a number of times about various problems which the railways you can imagine you are talking about one city but he talks about the railways all over the country where similar things like a wagon or a, or a bogey or a or engine lying defunct and what to do with it you know so maybe mr mukherjee you would like to ask something or give some suggestion uh, thank you mr kapoor uh, both the kapoors of course and uh, 
Rajanveer, I uh, would you are much younger to me. I retired four years back, uh, but uh, we are very passionate about railway, uh, rail-based transport, and tram is a rail-based transport. In fact, uh, uh, five years back, we tried to have a uh, one of the old tram cars put on the railway museum at Howrah, but that time it didn't work. I'm sure that this time we can work together. Uh, You've done a wonderful job. It's been visible on the road, and uh, it's been visible when uh, the uh, you know we've had this Corona crisis, and people have not been coming out yet. We have seen the enthusiasm. I must congratulate you. Uh, I own. I would uh, take your uh, email from uh, Mr. Kapoor, and then give my suggestions to you separately. I don't want to waste everybody's time. Thank But you so much, sir. Most yes. important things that I feel is. a person yes, who lives by uh, the uh, beside uh, on a road where the tram moves we must mm. think about them the noise level i'm sure you are thinking about it like in europe and us and australia they have these rubber uh, car rubber wheels and things like that we need to work on that because that will make uh, the environment friendly this is one thing which i think uh, we should do secondly is an integrated ticketing concept because unless we have an integrated ticketing otherwise the you know we we uh, wbtc and uh, uh, other state transport corporations together if you have an integrated ticketing then you know the hop on hop off of a person who wants to go from one year one place take a road and also metro i'm see if you can work out with them i'm sure this will work out uh, excellently because people will use it for small legs we need trams to sort of uh, uh you uh, work as the uh, as the feeder to the herring bone of metro that is very important that is the second thing i feel that i should uh, I, this is my idea but i won't take much of your time you are a busy person i know we are retired when we start talking we don't end thank you very much for doing a great job for my city thank you so, thank you so I much sir uh, i can do or my association i am just doing my job sir it will be a pleasure to be in touch with you later i'll take your number from pm yeah on both the issues that you have raised sir <clears throat> it's a good idea to work on the silence aspect of the trams i'll just get my engineering team to give me feedback and then we can see uh, you know if it's plausible and feasible and secondly sir regarding integrated ticketing i must inform everybody here in the august gathering that we already have come up with a smart card sir and that smart card works on the trams it did not run on the trams earlier but i'm getting it run on the trams now so that was one of the announcements i was going to make in a few days so you forced me to say it now within a week or so that smart card is going to work on the trams also because the technology was not fitted so now you know you can use that smart card and that same smart card will run on all my boats so jodi apni havra theke aschen wonderful you will you will take my boat in a smart card and then you can take a metro uh, the tram in that same smart card and the same smart card will work in my bus and we're trying to convert uh, we've already talked to the metro very soon it the same will work in the metro as well so you'll ultimately be it will be like oyster card of london it's coming up and this was something which i wanted this was not the only thing technologically one more thing is happening but this is one of the thing i wanted to tell so yeah we're doing so, there are many parallel things that we will be talking have thought so 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 yes yeah, absolutely but i'm very happy that you know at least the ideation that we have been having is relevant that's why you people are saying the same thing yeah thank uh, you so more last thing if i may uh, see you see to bring in the youth and the children to yes, love sir. trams i have a yes. granddaughter of 5 years old who might take along in the trams i live very near garihar depot so it's very easy for me uh, you know if we can have one small uh, tram uh, circular tram in eco park or somewhere uh, like that where you know the the children who go a lot or ravindra sarovar for example it's a toy tram kind of a thing it has helped us in our railway museums toy trains that is okay. something which will encourage them to want to this was one of the first ideas that floated when i joined sir because i also thought that you know a lot can be done by distributing trams to various parts of the city i'll have to take it up with the concerned authorities sir if there will be yeah. i understand thank you sir thank you very much thank you so there are a few questions which i just read out to you if it's all right okay, with you okay gm yes gm please tram with a cafe i think this is already started if i'm not 
mistaken. So my answer here is that we already have uh, the tram libraries. We are lo- launching cafes in both the trams. In fact, uh, if everything goes well, there's going to be some sort of eatery or small cafe in all the special trams we're running. We cannot have them in everyday trams because the sales and the viability option comes in. But all these special trams that we're running, with GM, maybe it's Patrani or the library or any other tram we're coming up with. Uh, this is a very good idea and a question by whoever he has sent. I'll check the chat. We, we're thinking on these lines, yeah. And I must also tell the audience here that we've done some creativity with the buses and boats also. We have launched a tire park at uh, the Dharamtala tram depot area. So now we are integrating these things that if you come with a tram from a certain part of the city, you can see that and go back. So cafes are being installed there also. So yeah, thank you. Okay. So then, then there's one about uh, the great ideas. This is from Gautam Ghosh. Uh, but uh, Peacefield's uh, venture, but what about the root trams? The ones that will transport people. I believe that while trams are taking piecemeal uh, perpetual space on narrow streets, yet the wider routes will still accommodate tram cars. I think so uh, any- I already answered this question, GM, when I told uh, yeah. for about 10-15 minutes that after these small interventions, we are now yeah. planning to bring changes in the entire running tram system. So I think uh, that question must have been entered before I said it because you're reading them in one go. Mm. So I'll again repeat the answer that, you know, these small interventions were just done to test the waters because for me, it was important to know how much genuine love is there for the trams left in the city. And I'm sure it is. And I'm very happy with the response. So so we're now coming up with systemic improvements for the entire network. And you'll see two, three big things in December, sir. I cannot tell them right now, but by mid of December, you'll see uh, two, three big announcements. Right. On in the day says that boarding and li- alighting a tram car has become a big challenge for this from the safety angle. It is risky as there are no designated stops which is respected by motorists. Would we like your we would like to hear your thoughts on this? Well, see, I cannot comment really much on the status here because I'm part of the government, but I have been abroad mm-hmm. to a lot of countries and I certainly feel that a lot can be done because you know in Toronto where my family stays. Uh, whenever the tram stops, it's a it's a rule on the road that cars have to stop. So if you cross the tram, you're going to be fined about two hundred dollars. So this mm-hmm. needs a, a combined effort of the traffic police and the municipal corporation and all of us. So it's a good point raised, and I think uh, uh, we could take it up with the, all the authorities because it cannot simply be done by only one organization. We got to take everybody on board, and that's how it is in most mm-hmm. of the countries in the West. So when there's a tram which stops at a particular stop on the road, the traffic behind certainly stops. So expecting it from, um, you know, expecting 100% compliance is a far cry, firstly. And secondly, whether we can have all stakeholders on the same page is also to be seen. So yeah, I'm pretty much aware of the idea. Whoever has asked this question, thank you. And... um, this has to be a natural course of action. So I think we can take it up once we do the improvement for the whole network. Because the biggest challenge I'm facing right now is changing the perceptions of a lot of call calcutans that cram is actually something worthy. Because a lot of people have not, uh, I think it's not got its due for a very long time. So I think we need to first upgrade the entire system, make it look very nice, attractive, as well as improve the overall infra. And then I think this is the next step. Surely going to happen. Yeah. Right. So there's a there's a uh, observation or remark by Mr. J L Singh of the uh, Rail Enthusiast Society that there is a Kolkata tram at the Heritage Transport Museum run by Tarun Thakral near Gurugram. Just for information. I would love to see it. Uh, uh, GM, if I ever go to Delhi, I'll catch up with this. I can talk to Mr. Yeah, yeah. J L S later. And, uh, he's done a good job. He's can, in fact from Nonapokur, a wooden tram. He's purchased it and taken it and he's preserving it. He's doing a good job for our uh, heritage. Right. So what we'll do is we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll, he himself is also for uh, helping out here. So, so, so. Mr. Singh wants to say something. Mr. Singh, were you saying something? 
so there are other uh, there are few other questions 31 uh, good trams are lying inside the belgachia depot how should they be brought to the mainstream and utilized firstly i congratulate the person for counting the trams because even i haven't been able to go and count the good and bad but uh, it's a genuine question because of xyz reasons a lot of routes have closed in the last you know few decades i must mm. say not just years from 80s onwards so till the time the routes are open then you know it's feasible to open the route those will be lying there because we cannot air lift them so that's what i said the th- third plan is if trams have been mm-hmm. lying somewhere and they have actually if they are in working condition we'll definitely try to put them on some of the routes but if they're not we're trying to work for in situ sort, sort of heritage come tram upgradation so that you know despite the fact that we we cannot wait for the route to be open at least we can do something with those trams why why make them lie in the depot hidden from the world that's what my thought is so uh, there are no plans to introduce trams in say a new town or in um, salt lake or something like that gm these are good ideas and uh, in a personal capacity i would want to support them but then you know when you have to plan something like this it requires interdepartmental interorganizational sort of coordination and uh, um true, true. at least the the routes that we have right now is my jurisdiction i can do anything with those, those routes but if i have to go beyond that we can certainly work it's a good idea we'll certainly try to take it up with the concerned authorities and if we get an approval i think nothing like that because if we can have trams in the open part of the city the traffic argument fails yeah yeah yeah, yeah. right so if uh, there are any other questions there is one if i can only mr kapoor number can i just ask one question please yes who's that uh, oh prabhu yeah. yeah please Uh, Mr. Kapoor, uh, Mr. Rajendra yeah. Kapoor, you said that you are uh, evaluating methods how by which you can make tram transport more popular. So, so I was thinking that electric uh, power, I mean, once you have access to it, is cheaper than the automotive fuel power. You know. Yes, sir. And that way, uh, if you converted the trams to AC, it will not cost you maybe a lakh or so per tram, but the additional cost of running the AC trams will be marginal. so you so, have is level comfort at very low cost compared to what you can so, on the road transit so, that so, itself so, is a huge attraction i so, feel so so that's a very valid point it, it can only come from very seasoned individual you know, and you're completely correct when i see the operational cost of vehicles electricity is a very cheap mode of transportation vis-a-vis fuel sir so that's why i must tell you a good news that we are we are actually kind of converting a lot of our new trams into single bogey ac trams sir because when i do it single bogey nobody can say that you are you know disturbing the traffic yeah. and when the ac you can attract people who can even pay higher okay. so sir uh, the uh, young readers tram ka that we launched right now has been an ac tram and uh, uh, there are a lot of ac trams which are being built and they will be added to the routes very soon sir so it's a very good point and we are following it sir yes and secondly uh, in old Bombay used to have double decker trams, single coach double decker trams. If you remember, thirties and forties in Bombay, I mean that's another thought because it would accommodate without jamming up the road, and uh, you could have a rear staircase. I just it might be structurally more difficult to work out. So let me just check this out, sir, because I think what we can do is, sir, in case if we have to extend the tramways to other parts of the city, then we can launch this one there, sir. Let me just check it out, sir. I have not really researched much on this, sir.
So if there are no further que questions, uh, may I request uh, Nantara to please convey our thanks on behalf of INTAC to Mr. Rajanveer Kapoor for having, uh, let's say, I would say, opened his heart out to us uh, as yes. far as tramways. So I start with the younger Kapoor. Uh, thank you so much for agreeing to be with us this afternoon. I just simply love the energy you have, you know, always coming out with new ideas. And every time I meet you, you know, I think I can spend hours with you sharing ideas. But this has been a very enriching experience for us. And I do hope in the near future, we will be taken on a physical ride, uh, the intact members. Absolutely, and, absolutely. Uh, in the right. near future, uh, the river cruise. It's all so very exciting, you know. Um, we must thank all the participants for uh, joining us today and sharing your thoughts with us. And special thanks to our young volunteer, uh, Odidev Guha, who always comes to our rescue because we are, we are still technically challenged and there's this young man who does it for us and coordinates our events. So this has been a wonderful uh, celebration of the Heritage Week. And we really, really thank you for joining us. I know how busy you are and it is very good to see you back in action after your illness. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. And we look forward to a tram ride soon. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Goodbye. Okay. Bye, everyone. Thank you, Adi.